Right now I'm standing in a beautiful German forest. However, 2000 years ago, this region was the location of a brutal fight between Roman legions and Germanic tribes. A fight over freedom, a showdown in the heart of Europe. During the reign of Augustus, the Roman Empire experienced an unseen period of peace. Carthage was destroyed, the former Hellenic kingdoms now thriving Roman provinces, Iberia and Gallia were tamed, and a deal with the Persians prevented a conflict in the east. However, there was still one problem. Germanic tribes frequently pillaged Roman territories in Gallia. The Romans and the Germanic tribes had already come into contact. In 115 BC, a group of Cimbri and Teutoni decided to leave their home in northern Germany and moved south. Two years later, they met Roman troops in Noricum, modern Austria. The local consul Cabo decided to offer them land, but later attacked them. The Cimbri noticed that this was only a trap and nearly extinguished the legion. The next big battle occurred in the year 105 BC at Aurasio, which is modern south East France. This time the Romans were prepared. They had sent an army of 100,000 men under two consuls. However, the consuls were not able to agree on a common tactic. Therefore, it was quite easy for the Cimbri to destroy both armies. However, at this point, they decided against invading Italy, which was unprotected, and moved to Gallia and Iberia. This gave Rome time to reform their army, so when they met next time in the year 102, the Romans finally defeated them under Marius. The Romans were quite shocked by the brutality of the Cimbri. For example, looted gold was just thrown into the next lake, and captured soldiers were sacrificed to unknown gods. This brutality would be known as Furor Teutonicus. At this point, the Romans believed that they were attacked by some sort of wild Celts. Only 50 years later, Caesar told them that it were in fact Germanic people and not Celts. But who were the Germanic tribes? The Germanic people inhabited the area to the left of the Rhine. There were no homogenic group, but rather multiple different tribes that were united by a common language. The Germanic tribes did live in rather decentralized villages. Towns with more than 1000 people were quite rare. Nearly everything that we know about the Germanic people was told us by the Romans. Because they were a culture without writing. For the Romans, they were barbarians, stateless people. However, in comparison to Rome, the Germanic men were much freer. With the Ting, they even had democratic organizations. Young Germanic warriors would usually form war bands for robbery warfare into Germanic or foreign territory. The goal of these raids was to gain wealth. Especially the Sicambri were known for conducting these raids into Roman territory. In 16 BC, they crucified Roman centurions, who tried to collect taxes on the east of the Rhine, and began to raid Gallia. When a legion under Marcus Lolius tried to stop them, they were wiped out and the warband even captured the eagle of the legion, the Great Shame. This event entered the Roman history as the Cladis Luliana. As a reaction, Augustus moved six legions to the Roman border. Terrified. The Sucumbri begged for peace and even gave the eagle back. However, such deals don't really have a long life expectancy in Germania. Only one year later, they returned and pillaged Gallia again. This time, however, the Romans were prepared. The Sucumbri met legions commanded by Drusus, an experienced young general and nephew of the emperor. After defeating the Sucumbri in Gallia, he went on the offensive. The first thing that Drusus and his legions did was to destroy the homeland of the Sucumbri. With this he sent a clear message. If you mess with the empire, you will be punished. However, it seems like there was no battle with the Sucumbri and they just escaped Drusus. Or at least the sources do not mention one. Next he decided to explore the North Sea coast with a giant fleet. Here he was able to secure an alliance with the Friesi or German Friesen. His knowledge about this ocean came from the Greek explorer Pythias of Massalia. However, Pythias had forgotten to mention the tides and therefore the Roman fleet soon got stuck. 
Now the Chauki, who lived at the muzzle of the Vesa, saw their chance to attack the helpless Romans. But to the luck of Drusus he had the Frisi who protected him and his men. At the end the Chauki had no other choice than to become Roman vessels. Drusus first campaign was quite a success. He had effectively punished the Sucumbri. The Sucumbri raid on Gallia was the last Germanic raid on Roman territory for more than 100 years. And also he had secured the North Sea coast. But Drusus wanted more and therefore he planned another offensive. In the year 11 BC he crossed the Rhine and subjugated some neighbors of the Sucumbri. Then again he moved into Sucumbri territory and again he found it abandoned. He continued his way to the Vesa, where the Kuruski lived, who had also escaped. At this point he had made a big mistake, because the Sucumbri had not escaped. They had formed a giant anti-Roman coalition. On the way back the Romans were constantly attacked. At one point the Germanic warriors even looked for a battle with the Romans. This battle was won by Drusus. Offer it was close and he had many casualties, but only because of the more experienced Roman soldiers. The difference between the Roman and the Germanic armies could not be greater. The Roman army was organized in legions, an independent army with 6000 men. The Roman soldier was called legionary. He wore an armor consisting of a helmet and chainmail, with a large shield called scutum. During this time, the legions began to also implement the Lorica Segmentata, an armor consisting of metal strips. The legionary was armed with a pilum that he would throw at the beginning of a battle. After that, he would fight with a short sword, called Gladius. The Roman army also used skirmishers, that were mostly recruited in foreign countries. The units were called auxiliaries. The Roman cavalry also mostly consisted of auxiliaries. The Romans preferred Germanic cavalry and many emperors even employed Germanic cavalry as guards. On the other side, the Germanic warriors came together in war bands. These war bands could consist of multiple thousand, but also only a few hundred warriors. Only a few Germanic warriors could afford chainmail and a sword. Most would fight with a spear called frame. Their shields were smaller and also rounder than the Roman ones. Both were also used, but only of limited scale. As already mentioned, the Germanic tribes had excellent cavalry. The Germanic warriors would learn from this. Next time, the Romans would not get a fair battle. In the year 10 BC, Drusus launched an offensive to subjugate the Chatti in modern Hesse. In the next year, he wanted to reach the end of Germania, which the Romans suggested at the Vistula. But first, he had to fight bloody battles against the Soebi, which he won, but again he suffered high casualties. At this point the Marcomanni and their king Marbot left the Zoebi and formed a new kingdom in Bohemia, which will be important later. Drusus actually reached the Elbe, but according to the sources, here he was approached by a huge Germanic woman. The woman told him that he should return, and she also said that the end of his life was near. So Drusus returned. But on the way back, he fell from his horse and died. This point is rather mysterious, because we don't really find huge Germanic women in the Germanic mythology. We also don't find something similar in the Roman one, so it is very likely that this was just an excuse to return. When the news about the tragic death of his nephew reached Rome, Augustus sent Tiberius to take over command. Tiberius immediately rushed towards Germania, only accompanied by Germanic guardians and was able to reach his dying brother who seated in his arms. Drusus was a unique character in Roman history. He was young, charismatic, good looking and very popular with his men. When he died, his legions did not want to leave until they had constructed a large memorial, the so-called Drusus stone, which you can still visit in Mainz. However, Drusus often risked the life of his men. Augustus liked to tell his generals that when you fish with a golden hook, no catch can compensate you if you lose it. Drusus ignored it. In 11 BC he had nearly lost 5 legions. Drusus' campaigns were also quite brutal. Because he could not fight with the Germanic warriors in a battle, he systematically attacked their livestock. 
When Tiberius took over command, the Germanic tribes had been at war for three years, leaving your home to escape an enemy as possible, but not four times in a row. Therefore, at this point, the Germanic tribes had no other option than to ask for peace and to become Roman vassals. In 8 BC, Tiberius settled 40,000 Sucumbri to the western side of the Rhine. Here, they could be more easily observed by Roman legions. Another tribe that was forced to lay down its arms were the Kuruski. This event was observed by a nine-year-old boy. We don't know his Germanic name, but the Romans would call him Arminius. However, his story will be told in the next part. I hope you liked this video. As always, stay healthy. Bye.